Tides are the rise and fall of sea level. But what causes them? You can see the largest tides in the Bay of Fundy in Nova Scotia, Canada. The difference in water height from high tide to low tide can be up to 40 feet. To understand how they work, we're going to need to first talk about gravity. Any two objects, like these two balls, have a natural attraction. That's the force of gravity. The greater the masses, the greater the force. And the closer they get, the stronger the force becomes. For example, the Earth and the Moon. There's a force of gravity between them that will draw them closer and closer and... Um, uh, hmm. What keeps them from exploding? If you attach a ball to a string and then swing it over your head in a circle, it will keep spinning around. Because of the ball's circular motion, there's an outward centrifugal force that keeps the string taut. And as long as you keep a good grip on the string, you're exerting a force that keeps it from flying off. These two forces are equal, but in opposite directions. So the ball doesn't crash into you, and it doesn't fly off either. The moon spins around the Earth, so it too has an outward centrifugal force. And as we saw earlier, it has gravity pulling it towards the Earth. These two forces cancel each other out, so the moon has a stable orbit, it doesn't crash into us, and it also doesn't fly off in outer space. The Earth is also attracted to the Sun, so there's a force of gravity between the Earth and the Sun. And because the Earth orbits around the Sun once every year, it also has a centrifugal force. The Earth has a diameter from the North Pole to the South Pole of 7,900 miles. But at the equator, the diameter is a little bigger, 7,926 miles, because gravity stretches it out a little. And the oceans also get stretched out. This is the tides. If we look at the Moon and the Earth from far above the North Pole, the Moon causes a bulging of the oceans. The Moon is in tidal lock with the Earth. That means that we always see the same side of the Moon. As the Moon goes around the Earth, which takes about 30 days, it also drags this bulge of oceans. The two big bulges are the high tides, and the two side bulges are the low tides. Because this bulge goes around the Earth every 24 hours, that's why there's two high tides and two low tides every day. You can find out when these tides happen anywhere on the planet by consulting the appropriate tide table. The tide table starts at midnight and progresses to the right up until midnight of the next day. At midnight, the tide is about three feet and then slowly rises until it reaches high tide at around 6 a.m. And the water level is about 13 and a half feet. As the day progresses, the water level continues to go down until it reaches low tide. Here, that's around 3 p.m., and the tide level is about one and a half feet. And then the ocean starts to rise again, heading for the next high tide. Every day, the high and low tides are different because they're influenced by the moon and the sun, and they're doing this dance, having a different gravitational effect every single day. But because of science, we can figure out exactly when the high tides will occur and how high they will be. It's fun to go to the beach when there's a really low tide. You can see tide pools, check out living sea creatures in their natural habitats, and get a glimpse of life under the waves. Well, I hope that helps to explain how tides work. Great. So be sure to like and subscribe, and if you got any other questions, let me know. That could be our next video.